Hey everyone, we are at CES 2017 at the Thermal Take booth and we'll be looking at a Sandia style cooler, which is pretty interesting. It uses a much different design than you're used to. Looking at an RGB illuminated AIO cooler and we'll mention some of the P3 and P1 series cases while we're going through here. Before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by CyberPower and their Cyber XL gaming PC, which has an invertible motherboard tray layout. Learn more at the link in the description below. So starting off with the AIO. This is really not too different fundamentally from what we've spoken about a million times at this point. It's an AIO liquid cooler. There are three 120 millimeter fans, and they use the Rain version 2 RGB LED fans that we talked about previously when visiting Thermal Takes studio and offices uh, in Southern California. What is different is the pump. So I can't lift this up too much, but we've got some B-roll of it. And the pump is actually uh, just a prototype. There's no confirmation that this will ever come to market, but the idea is to at a very top level at least, create illumination in the pump that will be controllable theoretically either through software or just through the board, something like that. Uh, and you may have seen that on the Kraken series coolers that we reviewed recently, the X2, so X42, 52, 62. Same idea, this just comes down to uh, you know, will it be made basically. Uh, but same idea, that would be a pretty serious competitor to the Kraken coolers. We'll look at thermals if the time comes. But for the Sandia style cooler, this one is the Engine 27. And this is a small form factor cooler. It can cool somewhere around 70, 75 watts of power. So it's not built for high-end stuff, obviously. You throw it on something like one of the new i5 non-K SKU CPUs, which have about a 65 watt TDP. Something like this would work for that. The difference from this versus normal coolers, as you'll notice in our B-roll, is that the unit does not use a traditional fan. So it's actually got aluminum fins in the center and a kinetic bearing in the middle for uh, the rotation. And these aluminum fins work as a normal heat sink, they sink the heat, but as they spin, they're pushing the air out through an outer aluminum fin array, and so then you're getting the additional surface area, and you're also cooling it at the same time. The bottom of this one, there are two versions. One's an aluminum base plate, or cold plate. One's a copper cold plate. The one I have here is a copper cold plate, and if we look at the side, it's got two layers of copper with a layer of what looks like aluminum in between and in this model I'm told there's a heat pipe inside the cold plate but it's not confirmed if that will be final and make it to production or not. As far as the plate itself that contacts the CPU that is a protruded piece of copper which we've generally found to perform at least a little bit better than a flat piece of copper. So that's what we have for the Engine 27. Uh, no price on most of these things. The Engine 27 is a prototype but will probably come to market. This is an existing case. It's got tempered glass on it, the P5. There's also the P3, and we'll be talking about the P1 next. So we'll move over there. And now we're next to the core P1 TG. This is a mini ITX version of the P3 and the P5. And in that, and to that end, it has the same feature set for the most part with obviously just being a bit shrunken. The P1 TG can mount to your wall just like the P3, the P5 could. Uh, can't mount it to the wall in the Venetian, they would get pretty mad, but it is wall mountable. Otherwise, the main feature set is a semi-modular layout for the chassis, the frame itself. And that starts here with the video card where you've got the framing and a PCIe riser cable so that the video card can be facing with the front plate out, which is really just for visibility. There's no other functional add to that other than just being able to see the front of the card. If you don't like that, just with, as with the other cases, you pull that out, switch the card, mount it to the PCIe slot on the motherboard just like normally, and uh, in terms of fitment, it can fit any size video card because really there's no side panel to the case. It just shoots straight out. But any card should be contained within that space. There are uh, the stainless standoffs here for the glass, and then the gl tempered glass mounts straight to the front of that, uh, though we've re removed it for video purposes. This has a full custom loop mounted to it, and there's a plate down here where you can actually adjust uh, in terms of Z depth how the reservoir is positioned in the case. There's a radiator in this particular build. It looks like about a 240 millimeter radiator mounted in its own compartment back here. And then the tubes are routed uh, to the CPU, the GPU, all that stuff as expected. Cable management happens behind the board tray. And then for power supplies, there can be a full ATX form factor power supply. That about covers it. There's no price that I have right now for this case. We'll have more information in the article linked in the description below as always. Subscribe for more. Patreon link the post video helps out directly. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.